My guest is Bubba Watson. He's a pro golfer, two-time Masters champion. He finished in a tie for fourth at this past weekend's Zozo Championship with a score of 19 under par. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Bubba Watson. Bubba, how are you? I'm great, man. How you doing? Good. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I want to start off by talking about some of your great endorsement partners. The thing I saw a few years ago is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You and Oakley got together and you worked on a hovercraft. And Bubba, when I saw that thing, I was like, I want one of those things. Instead of a golf cart, I want the thing that goes over the water, goes through the sand traps. How did you and Oakley get together on that hovercraft? You know, when we partnered up, uh, gosh, that was, man, we partnered up in what, 13? It was January yeah. of 13, this video yep. came out, I think. Um, and how do we make the partnership work? How do we make the partnership last? And everybody knows that I'm with Oakley. Um, sorry. <coughs> man, you make me nervous. Um, <coughs> man. And so how do we do that, right? The, the team at Oakley, their, their, their marketing team, their management team, how does Bubba Watson make a splash with Oakley? gosh I'm so sorry um and how do you make that splash and obviously you throw out random ideas and thoughts and crazy ideas and and we're like wait a hovercraft how does that work how, how can you see this working is it even possible and then you think about rescue vehicles so there is hovercrafts out there uh, military vehicles uh rescue vehicles and um we make it into a golf cart and um you know it's one of those crazy ideas you're like ha 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 that might work. Um, and then there's some companies that, that produce smaller ones, personalized ones uh, for, for different rescues and ice rescues and different things like that. And so, you know, the vision comes true and, and somehow um, we can go on water and we can go on bunkers and greens and don't mess up the golf course. But I'm going to be honest with you, it's, it's quite scary when you're in there by yourself. Is it? I mean, it, it looks like it just glides and floats it over does. everything. It's, it's it's nine inches of air, so you know you, however high that is, um, and then um, but if you're on that water and you let go of the gas, <laughs> it's a paperweight. It's a paperweight real fast. Oh man! And so um, luckily, you know tr my training that they gave me and everything uh, worked out to perfection. We never lost one, but um, it was uh, it was fun to be a part of and fun to create. Um, that's what I love doing. I love creating, just like golf. Love creating shots. Well, I'll tell you what, if those ever go on sale, I think a lot of people would uh, look at buying those. They look really cool and uh, just a great idea. BW1, is it sitting in your garage at home? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, we actually sold, they sold a few. You know, the company that produced it for us, um, they sold a few. Um, people, you know, people have um, high-end taste. They yeah. got it quite a bit. Exactly. All right, so Ping is another one of your long-time partners the pink driver there's a lot of people that look at you and and they go what's the story behind the pink driver give our audience uh some insight as to why you play the pink driver so when i was young um i was hitting it far kind of like i do now um and i wanted a pink driver shaft just the shaft not the head um ping has always been traditional black and white company right like this is what we're doing this right. is, we stay to this mold which is a good mold because they're pretty good at it. Um, and so family owned company. So you're not going to mess with ping too much. You're going to, it's black and white. This is what we do. This is how we do it. And then one day um, after the pink driver shaft, I went to John Sohan, who's now the boss of the company um, after his dad, Karsten passed away and um, told him my idea. My idea was charity. How do we raise money for, for kids around the world? Um, cancer kids, just kids in general, people in general. And um, I said, I want a pink driver. And he told me, we don't do that. And I said, that's great, but here's what I want. Um, and luckily for me, I, Bubba Watson does not fit the mold of ping, but now I do, right? Like it's just, it's such a great partnership. And, and John is, is, I call him John, even though it's Mr. Solheim. He's like my grandfather. I've known him for a long, long time. I didn't really know my grandparents, so he's like my granddad. Um, whatever he says is what I stick to. And um, he blessed me with the pink driver. He said I could do it. And um, we sold five. The first batch was 5000 We raised, I think it was 
300, 350,000 for the Children's Hospital in Phoenix, Arizona, where Ping is based. Um, so we, we made a gait lab there where um, looked at deficiencies in, in walking postures and the way kids walk and how we can fix that. So that's what that lab was about. And then the next batch, another 5,000 a year or so, two years later, um, every time a new model comes out, we, we sell a batch. And um, we did the children's hospital. We built a new children's hospital here in Pensacola, Florida, where I live. And a town like I live in is not supposed to have a children's hospital, five-story children's hospital. Mm. But the people that I, um, I know and look up to, they pushed it to the limit. And somehow we have a children's hospital, 180,000 people in Pensacola. We needed 1.5 million people. Somehow we have a children's hospital. Um, it's amazing to be a part of that. And Ping was a part of that. Good and for then you. When you think, and then when you think about um, the next batch, we split 50-50. So the children's hospital in Phoenix, children's hospital here in Pensacola. Um, so the, the, the story of the driver, it was my innocent, wanted a pink shaft because I like bright colors. Um, I like lime green and pink. And, um, and then I said, hey, we're going to change this. We're going to blow the minds off people with, with the charity dollars we can raise just off of a driver. And, and Solheim, his whole thing was not about raising the price of the driver because it's pink. His whole thing was, no, we still sell a quality club, the best club on the market, and we sell it the same price. And we just take some of the money from that price and give it away. And that's what he did. He didn't, you know, they're, they're family owned. They just, they're about improving the game of golf. And, and now they give so much back and, and I'm a part of giving back because of the drivers. Good for you. What a legacy for uh, both of you. So the next mm -hmm. company, we both work with them, uh, CBDMD. So, Bubba, you know, this has been a crazy year, as you know, and a lot of us are having a hard time sleeping. We've got some extra anxiety. I have been using CBDMD, the Sleep PM capsules and drops. Uh, I use the CBD Freeze for rest mm. and recovery. Um, it's been great for me. I've seen some of your testimonials. It looks like it's really made a difference for you, too. Wow. Um, yes. I mean, 2020 is, is a different topic. I'm going to start back even further back. Mentally, um, you know, my parents raised me the right way. They, they did everything they possibly could. They scraped together every penny they had and helped me become who I am. Um, good or bad, it's who I am. And um, so when I look back, they didn't prepare me to be a, a PJ Tour champion. They didn't prepare me to be a Masters champion twice. <clears throat> they didn't prepare me to be a, a spokesperson for mental health or, or a, a person for to raise millions of dollars for a children's hospital. They, those were not even in our realm. Like we can't even think that big. Um, and so because, becoming a so-called celebrity, we'll say, um, it, it's been challenging. Um, becoming a husband is challenging because now I have to uh, take care of my wife who loves me unconditionally for some reason. Um, and then you think about two adopted kids, my dad going through cancer in 2010, passing away. Um, you know, the mental side of that um, is, is so hard for me personally that I didn't know where to turn. I mean, I, I've been to the hospital many times thinking something was truly wrong with me, um, thinking I wasn't going to live another day. I've had a lot of mental issues. I went down to 100, I'm around 190 roughly, and then I got down to 162 weight. Um, and what do you turn to? Uh, you know, luckily for me, my lowest point of my life, I didn't turn to drugs or alcohol i turned to people and why did i turn to people i don't know that's just all i knew is to ask for help i'm not ashamed to ask for help and i asked many doctors my wife my close friends um and the first thing that popped in was was cbd cbd oil and i take it religiously now um cbd md was the first company i tried i love the product um my sleep has been good mentally over the last three, roughly three years, I've been taking it. Um, everything's changed. My weight got back. My anxiety went down. My my passion for other things and other people and helping other people, speaking out about mental issues that I've had, um, trying to help one another, trying to help people. We all want love and we all want to be loved. Social media can can make you not feel loved real fast. And so, for me personally, I've learned the hard way. 
And luckily I'm coming out of it. I've came out of it and I want to just share with multiple people. So that was before 2020 and then 2020 happened. And now we're, um, we're dealing with stuff that we've never had to deal with. Um, I, I don't think many people alive have had to deal with something like this. And so we're all learning together. And again, the CBD oil that I've started three years ago, CBD MD has, has helped me get to where I am, come out of a, a deep hole um, in a good way, in a positive way. <clears throat> and I praise them as a company. And now I'm just happen to be a spokesperson that, that praises them as an individual who takes the product and I'm also a client, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have found a company like that. Yeah, I'm the same way. I only use product that I believe in and, and that helps me. And it's really helped me. And it's remarkable. You know, it's THC free. So that was a big determining factor for me. I had all these companies sending me, hey, try this and try that. And, you know, I tried CBDMD and the THC free really made a difference for me. Yeah, for sure. Being an athlete, you know, being an athlete, golfers are athletes, by the way. Right. Um, oh, I, hey, no argument for me, man. <laughs> I just, for all the people watching, you know, um, you know, the Olympics, I got to play in the Olympics. Um, when you think about the Olympics, when you think about golf in general, sports in general, I had to have this safe product. I had to have a product that is THC free, that you can trust, that I know taking it when I put my head on the pillow. I'm free of anything that's going to cause me to be banned or, or be banished or be talked about. And so when it came to CBDMD, that's the first thing they told me. And that's the only reason I put it in my mouth is because I uh, trusted them. I looked at it. I went to the lab, saw how it was produced, had to put all the lab coats on and everything to protect myself. I saw it firsthand. I've been there. Um, and that's the only reason I put it in my body is because I trusted what they said on the internet is what they were doing in real life. And um, that's why I, I started taking it. A few minutes left. Uh, I want to get to a few other topics. So <clears throat> you're also uh, a business owner and investor. You've got Bubba's sweet spot. If I'm walking into Bubba's sweet spot to get some Halloween candy, what are the, the two or three go-to Halloween candies for you? Oh man. I mean, we have the old school candies that we all know and love. Yeah. You know, these young kids, these young kids don't know the old school candies, you know, but, but the, the in-house fudges, we make special fudges in-house right there. You can smell it. You can see it. You can do it all. And, um, you know, we make the special treats that look like Halloween, we'll say ghosts and goblins and, and different things. Frankenstein. Um, that's what I, that's my go-to and rice crispy treat. Um, over white chocolate over it. Oh man, I, I'm a sucker for those. Those are ones that I'm going all the time or a big, um, it's basically chocolate peanut butter cup, but it's, um, it's massive. It's like a stack of three. So it's massive. Those are my two go-tos. When I go in, I'm a sucker for that. And I'll buy those in a heartbeat. You had me at chocolate peanut butter cup. That's my favorite right there. <laughs> exactly. But Okay, so the other thing is you are uh, part owner of the Pensacola Blue Wahoos, the Minnesota Twins minor league affiliate. How did you get into that type of investment? And then I know that they <clears throat> rented out their park on Airbnb this year too. I, that was on the Today Show this week and it's made big news, but pretty clever. Yeah, so again, you know, it's, it's biz a businessman or a person that's very successful business-wise has the team around him. And when that team around you, like we talked about earlier with Oakley and their marketing team and their, their engineers and their people, <clears throat> same thing with the Wahoos, you hire the right people. They have these visions and these things that we come up with. So we're just on the Airbnb, how do we create jobs and keep those jobs instead of sending everybody home? What can we do? And, um, a lady came up with an idea of Airbnb and we're like, how can you do that and buy some beds and then let's put it out there. Who doesn't want to stay in a baseball field? I mean, I, I, I think of field of dreams. I think of uh, the natural. I mean, those are the baseball movies that I looked up to and it makes sense. And luckily for me, I was the first family to stay there. So we had to make sure it all worked properly. <laughs> oh, we, didn't sure people, did. we didn't want people. That's my reasoning. We yeah. Didn't want people to have bad reviews. So I wanted to stay there first. Um, <clears throat> so it was a blast. I mean, we went out and played baseball that night. Uh, my kids loved it. We played disc golf. We had food brought to us. It was a dream. Um, and then when you think about why, um, the why of the Blue Wahoos, why am I part of that? Um, 
I threw out a first pitch with the green jacket on in 14. <clears throat> well, I guess in 15 because the season started. Um, but I threw out a first pitch. <clears throat> and, um, and so when I threw out the first pitch, I wore the green jacket. And we went under the – past the dugout, went underneath the building. And Quint Studer, the owner, said, hey, Bubba, I really love what you stand for and I love what you do. And I said, man, I really love what you do. Like, I, I want to learn from you about giving back. How do we help a community that's helped me so much? And he said, really? And he said, yeah, we, I mean, we need to get together. I said, I'd love to. I said, but I'd really love to be a part of this team. And he goes, his first question was a great question. I've learned so much from him and, and other partners that I'm with. But he, um, he said, why? He said, why do you want to be a part of it? And he was asking me, trying to see my honest opinion from my heart. And I said, the family atmosphere, you can go here. There's not, there's not, you don't have to censor the family atmosphere. You don't have to bleep out words. You don't have to do different things. You can bring your, your kids to a safe environment. Um, it's a fun theme. Minor league baseball is so fun when you think about the acts that come to the ballpark. Um, so my whole view was about getting people downtown, getting people to love, be passionate about a team, a Pensacola team. And then the family atmosphere. I mean, who doesn't want to eat popcorn and hot dogs and, and hamburgers at a baseball game, right? And, um, and the, the setting that we're at. And, you know, Sunday when the Blue, the, the Blue Wahoos are playing, the Blue Angels fly over when they're coming back from a show. Um, there's so many positives about being downtown. And, and I never talked about money. I didn't. And he saw that or, or heard that. And he said, you didn't ask me about money. I said, I don't care about the money. I just want to be a part of the, a team. I've always wanted to own a franchise. I'm not wealthy enough to own the, the Yankees. So, uh, and, and so I didn't ask who we were affiliated with at the time. All I cared about was Pensacola and the baseball team and the family atmosphere and how cool it is to say you own a baseball team. Um, and it wasn't about how much money you make or how much money can you make. And it, it was none of, none of that. I could care less. And um, he saw that. He felt that, saw that, and rest is history. Now we're owners of a team. My family loves it. I've taken batting practice. I fielded fly balls, um, and now I've stayed in the Airbnb at my stadium as well. <laughs> you get to be a little kid again. Yeah, oh great. gosh, I love it. So before yeah. I let you go, uh, I've got to ask you about the Masters coming up. Two-time Masters champion. Bubba, it's being played in November. That's kind of weird. How does that change your preparation and just how the course may play? Because it's not being played in the spring. It's being played in November. You know – the Masters is one of those places where the grain, it looks like they cut the grass towards us in the fairways. So that means you're, it's hard to hit solid shots. So the whole thing is about catching the ball solid. But now take it to a new level where, you know, it's not about creating those shots before I get there. It's about creating those shots in my mind. Um, so I'm focused on right now, what's the weather going to be? The ball's not going to travel as far. How am I going to get the numbers to know how far my eight iron is traveling? So again, you know, take out the equipment, the flight scope, it tells me all my numbers in cold weather and all these things. Um, so I'm preparing for that, preparing for, it could be a little, with it being colder, it could be a little damper. So the ground could be a little softer. Um, but we know the masters, they have some good machinery that can make the golf course do a lot of things. So it'll be interesting. Like how do the leaves look? How do the trees look? How do the flowers, will they bring in flowers? And we already know there's going to be no fans. So the roars are going to be different. But what I'm preparing for mentally is, is a different kind of golf course, a longer golf course where it's going to be cold, could be wet, where the ball is not going to travel. So that means every par five that was reachable might not be reachable. Par threes are going to play a club longer. Um, so it's going to be the scoring average will go down or up, depending on which way you look at the scores. But it'll be tougher. Let's put it that way. It'll definitely be tougher because the ball doesn't, doesn't travel as far. It just doesn't go far off the tee and it doesn't go far off the iron. How has it been playing without fans? I, I, because of my mental issues, I'll just put it out there for the world. Because of my mental issues, you know, people yelling at you, people laughing at you when you three putt. I, I literally was the guy that thought it was going to be better. Um, and I'm here today to tell you 100%, it is terrible. It sucks. I wish the fans were there. I'd rather the fans yell at me. There's just no energy. Now, don't get me wrong. When I came in fourth and I came in seventh the week before, there was energy, right? You, you, because you're nervous because of trying to beat the guys next to you. Um, but when you're in 50th place, 
there's really no energy when you're in 60th place. There's no energy. And when you're missing the cut, there's really no energy. And um, so I miss the fans 100%. Everybody that I've talked to, big names, little names, it doesn't matter. We all miss the fans because we thought it was going to be, like, easy. Like, you get your practice rounds in. You just go home. You do these things. But it's really boring. You, you, like, we don't have those comments to talk about. Man, did you hear what that guy said over there? You hear what that girl said over there? Man, did you hear them laugh at you when you missed that putt? Like, we don't have those comments, and we don't – when you chip in, there's no roars. When you make a, a hole-in-one, there's no roars. Like, we've watched hole-in-ones where it's like, yay, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, we, we truly, as a whole, we miss them completely um, because that's what we play for. We play for the cheers and the booze. Okay, last thing, uh, <clears throat> the menu. When you're the defending champion at the Masters, you get to pick out the menu for the dinner. Give us a little insight. How does that work? So for me personally, I, I truly went mom's cooking. I, both times that I won, I went the same exact menu. Um, I went home cooking, country cooking, whatever you want to call it. We're from the South. And so I wanted chicken. I wanted green beans. I wanted mashed potatoes. I wanted cornbread, green beans. Um, and I wanted everything to feel like a home cooked meal. And, um, and then to top it off, I went um, straight birthday cake, confetti cake. Um, with a little vanilla ice cream on the side. Bubba Watson, two-time Masters champion. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Bubba Watson. Bubba, thanks so much, and best of luck to you in the Masters in November. No, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You're listening to Sports Business Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> 